Evangelist Katina, and this is a place where we're going to be studying and um, relationship empowerment. Today, we're going to be speaking about struggling in his repetitive sin, and this topic has a write up in our website. And if you look at um, relationship empowerment website, the link is on the side of the description box, and how to come over repetitive sin. I want to talk about the most important thing I believe you need to remember when you're dealing with repetitive sin, and that is this, never give up. And when you give up, that's when you really are starting getting in trouble and the sin is taking over and it's getting worse and you start denying you're actually sinning because your hearts become hard to god and the problems are endless and when you give up you're struggling with repetitive sin and that's and i don't understand why you want to give up because this you're in this terrible cycle and asking god to forgive you and doing the exact same thing over and over again. And this is directed to men and women that's going through um, divorce or not sure if they should divorce, but they've been separated for years and they want to know if this certain thing isn't stopping. And there's many answers to this question like this. And the Bible is full of advice on how to overcome the type of repetitive sin. And ultimately it comes to embracing your new identity in Jesus Christ. And this topic, we're going to be speaking about this in a month of February. And, and relationship empowerment. And if you give up and you're stuck in that repetitive sin, and Jeremiah 2, the Bible says, 34 to 35, or your clothes, men find the lifeblood of the innocent poor. And though you did not catch them breaking in, yet instead, you, despite all this, I am innocent. He's not angry with me. But I will pass judgment on you because you have said, I have not sinned. And when they start giving up and they said, I have not sinned, that's when the real problem has said. And more relevant to this topic of repetitive sin is 1 John 1, 8 through 10. If you claim to be without sins, you deceive yourself the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins and faithful and just and forgive of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And we claim we have not sinned. Maybe we come out to be a liar and his word has no place in our life. And God commands us, never give up. Not stop denying your sin by ignoring it because you're giving it up. Always confess because God forgive. And when you confess your sins and repent, God's forgive you. No matter how many times you've done that sin in the past. And this is not an excuse to keep sinning because God will forgive you. It's the foundation of being finally set free. That's the deliverance. If you don't think God is going to consistently forgive you every time you fail, you're not going to find the success that God has ultimately prepared for you. And lastly, Jeremiah 3, verse 22. Return faithless people. I will cure you of backsliding. And yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. God said, I will cure you of backsliding. So you have to consistently come to him. So most important thing, if you're transsexual and you've been going with men, always repent. Repent quickly, especially if you're giving your life to Jesus. No matter how many times you stumble and fall and you want to stop sleeping with other men, that's somebody that been on my heart for a while and he's been watching for a while. There's, I want to truly want to reach out to you and help you. And there's a book that is written out. You know, he, you can go through Psalms 51, Dom's songs of repentance when he finally convicted of his sin with Bathsheba. Psalm 51 is a blueprint of how to recover from any repetitive sin. And I'm not saying David is gay, but God will deliver you out of anything, especially when you're struggling with it. Pornography, masturbation, whatever thought you're struggling with, this book can really help you out when you read that scripture, when you open up the Bible. And if you want to go through that basic transformation, 
our Bible study on relationship empowerment was specifically in relationship with place you in transformation. And the big question is how does real life change happens? And what I want you to understand, take the simple gospel and apply it to life change. And eight fundamental truths in Christianity through our videos and how to apply for that change in your life. And the biggest topics that are pertain to the building relationship empowerments is justification and sanctification. Justification and sanctification. If the moment you're justified, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God declared you innocent and gave you Jesus Christ and put the righteousness on Jesus and put your sin on Jesus. And that transaction is never undone. No matter how many times you sin in the future, you will never outweigh God's grace. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. It doesn't mean that your sanctification is an important as well. Justification happened in a moment and God gave you Christ's righteousness. Sanctification is a process when it occurs over the course of your life. When you learn to put in practice the newness of life, God has given you a justification. And the way your sanctification is increased the way you find freedom from sin and become more and more holy is to believe more and more deeply of what Christ has already made you into. So the big truth of Christianity is when you become a Christian, you're no longer fighting for your freedom. Now you need to learn fight from the freedom that Christ had already given you. And in Galatians 5.1, Christ has set you free and stand therefore in that freedom. Don't let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. So when Christ has set you free, now through faith in that freedom is given to you, you can learn to walk more in that freedom throughout the course of your life. And that is very important. You never your repetitive sin. Believe more deeply in what Christ has made you into, and that will manifest in your righteous living. My name is Evangelist Katina, and thank you for joining me. And I encourage you to follow me on the follow me on Facebook um, business page and also on our YouTube channel. Please do subscribe, like, and share it. Forward it to at least four people today, um, please forward this video because there's someone that you will be able to touch their life. And it's also supporting the gospel. Once you forward the video to someone on your mobile phone, you can send it through a text message. Or if you're on your tablet or if you're on your um, desktop or laptop, you can forward it on your Facebook messenger. Forward the video to at least three people or four people today. And you're done became um, the social media evangelist. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to um, favor you. Shalom.